The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 26th. Wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Now is not too soon. 877-927-6648. Internationally, 727-445-1044. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. And inside the Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow trading up 61 points at 21,057. S&P is up about eight, trading out 23.96. NDX 100 up four points, trading out 55.52. The Russell up 13 points, trading out 14.24. The semis are off six points right now. Uh, otherwise, all the other indices, well, I take that back. The transports are down four tenths percent or about 35 bucks. Gold's off three. Silver's down 21 cents. Lights Recruit is up 19 pennies. Leading the charge here to the upside is Chipotle up 15 bucks. iRobot Corp up 11. Edwards Life Sciences up 107. Those are up 3, 15, and 9 percent respectively. Wind Resorts is up uh, about nine dollars or seven percent. To the downside, you've got Allegiant Travel down 14 dollars or about nine percent. Ultimate Software down 10 bucks, about four and a half percent. Netty's off 11 dollars. Seagate Technology down eight. USD down eight bucks off 26 percent 25.28 percent as we speak but uh, let me know what you want to take a look at and my apology for yesterday it was a real bummer real bummer for me for sure had the uh, sprinkler uh, uh, crew out here yesterday fixing some some pvc and some sprinkler heads and and uh, one or two of the guys went ahead and decided to go ahead and accidentally cut the buried cable line it was pretty odd because I'm like, the system was working a few minutes ago and, and it was dead. And, and like, it took me about 20 minutes to say, eh, this is not right. This is not coming back up after I did all the power up things like you would probably do as well. And then I walked outside and asked one of the guys, show me where one of those busted pipes were. And then I told him the reason why. I said, because my Internet's down. I'm trying to figure. And he said, he looked at me, he said, uh-oh. Those are not really words you want to hear. Uh-oh. And when he showed me the cut wire. Anyways, it all worked out. Pretty lucky that it worked out. You know, they say life happens for you. Thank goodness it was yesterday versus today when we're going to go ahead and do the uh, workshop here at uh, 5, uh, 530 this evening. So uh, that's going to be a great time. But anyways, let's go get to the markets. Enough enough about all of that. Rigor oh, I know where I need to start first because on Monday – um, Garo had called in, and I didn't see him uh, through my uh, through my uh, instant messaging here. And I do apologize if you ever call in and I don't get to you nearly right away. Th there's something wrong out there. But Garo wanted to take a look at SC. HW. Now, it's two days later. Who knows whether... Uh, then, Garl, if you're listening in, uh, feel free to go ahead and call. Um, but if we just take a look at... Uh, and I won't put up your normal screen. Well, maybe I will. I could just simply go search for the Garl screen, right? I've got a, an actual template 
just for him because of the tools that he uses that way I can keep track of what he is looking at when he calls in so we'll go ahead and we'll put up last time we were looking at fizz I guess it was F I Z Z this one here is S C H W is that uh, that Schwab so if we take a look at Charles Schwab out here so he was calling in on Monday and Monday, he got on his daily chart one of those nice little uh, parabolic star dots that suggested that it was time to uh, change trends and move to the upside. Now, he utilizes some different uh, times, time, uh, uh, interim, intermediate term time frames to go ahead and enter into those positions. But here's what I can share with you right now, girl, if you're listening in, is that uh, both yesterday and today, you got a nice move today, by the way, above the uh, daily market profile. So that is a uh, positive here, that profile being 39.35. Volume today, 7.8 million shares. Last time that we were really up here, or really what it's going into, is a group of sellers that may or may not still be around that were there on March 21st. And the volume there was about 10 million shares. So if they are around, their sphincter muscles getting awfully tight because it's going to do more than 10 million shares. So this says to me, because you have now cleared a resistance zone, you really did it yesterday with that little doji candle out there. Is it the halfway market? Mm, I don't think so. But, but however it is that you want to go ahead and trade it out there. This looks to me like uh, Schwab is headed back to its highs, which is, uh, well, at least on this chart here, if we just pull this back, it's daily. Yeah, it's probably its all-time high out here back on March 17th. So that's where it's headed to, somewhere between 42.81 and 43.62. And that is uh, Charles Schwab out there. That was for our man, Garo. Okay, let's go take a look at what the uh, markets are doing out here. Well, the markets are moving higher. No surprise there. In fact, uh, we are now today, if the markets were to close right here, right now, what this would be communicating to you and I is that we have gotten into um, we have gotten into liftoff territory. It's like we're going into another space and time out here, which is a great lyrics to a song, if I uh, if I'm not mistaken out here. Ooh, uh, is that a uh, ooh, who sang that song? Uh, uh, of course, many people have sung that tune out there, but the one that I'm thinking of, I think he, he died recently. Uh, and anyway, it might come to me. Uh, there's somebody might even post it. You never know. Uh, but um, so here's what we're going to go ahead and take a look at. First, let's just come take a look at uh, what the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ Composite, the Dow, the S&P 500 are doing out here. We can see they were up at uh, up, almost up into the highs from March the uh, 1st inside the New York Stock Exchange. You can't see now. Well, it may, might have been David, but that's not who I was thinking about. But uh, if we take a look at the uh, bottom panel of those three, of the first three out here, uh, though that being the uh, price, uh, the adv advanced decline price, uh, the advanced decline oscillator reading, all above zero, that means it is buyers in control. You didn't need me to tell you buyers in control. You might have needed me last week after when we came back from Good Friday to let you know there was buyers in control because of some tools that were out there. And then you would have caught this nice move that we've had to the upside. The question is, is the move about to poop out, so to speak, out here? And we're getting very close. So I have one signal that tells me as we speak right now, I need to see how the market closes, that we have actually gotten into the acceleration zone out there. And that's a beauty. Now, that does not mean that price moves higher tomorrow or the day after. What it says, if we close like this, is that we are going to see higher prices. I don't mean like months from now. I mean like over the course of the next few weeks. We'll go look at one more signal that needs to come in to tell you and I that that's indeed he do at the market. We'll be right back. During the last century, there have been 34 bear markets, approximately one every three and a half years. And since 1946, bear markets have accelerated to a rate of one every five years. And when it comes to market corrections, the kind that take back 10% or more of your gains, they've been occurring at a rate of one a year during the last 100 years. Now, if you're in your 30s or 40s, you can probably weather the storm. It's only took 13 years for the S&P 500 to get back above the highs that it made in 2000, which is much better than the NDX 100, which took 16 years to do the same. Look, it does 
doesn't matter what age you are. There's nothing more important than protecting your nest egg. And on Wednesday, April 26th at 530, I'll share with you two simple patterns that have been present at the beginning of every bear market and how knowing these will save your retirement. We here at TFNM believe this knowledge is so vital that every member of our Tiger family will have a link on their members page for this 30-minute presentation. If you're not a member, come over to the homepage of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN.com, we've got your back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. So the song I was thinking about is titled A Song for You. Now, the the, the entertainer that I was thinking of that was in my ears uh, singing, it was Joe Cocker. Uh, which, he does a great rendition. Now, he, Joe Cocker didn't write it. But Willie Nelson has performed it. Uh, well, a lot of people. Leon Russell uh, has performed it. Yeah, Fletcher. And I was supposed to see Leon. He was supposed to be playing in town, I think, next month. He passed away uh, a couple months ago. Leon Russell wrote it? I thought it was uh, Donny Hathaway, but uh, I, I'm not really sure. But it's a, it's, a, it's a cool tune. I don't know why it popped into my head the way that it did. Now I probably won't be able to get rid of it, but you don't really care. What you really care about was, what was I really going to say next with regard to jet propulsion laboratories out there? And uh, that is uh, the following. We're going to go pay attention to the advanced decline oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange, which right now is printed out at 132.30. It's going to go hit the 150 area. New York Stock Exchange is going to go ahead and take out its highs. It's close to doing that. The high from March 1st out here is 11,687. Uh, so far today, the high has been 11,653, so about 30 points away. You've got the advanced decline line. It's at new all-time highs. You know what goes with that expression. You know, markets don't end. Bull markets don't end on the day that the uh, advanced decline line is at new all-time highs. If you can prove to me that it does, please do so. I have not found it. Now, what hasn't confirmed yet could confirm today, um, just depending on how the market uh, responds out here, is we don't have a confirmation with regard to the volume oscillator, the summation index, just like that advanced decline line. It still has not taken out its size, which, by the way, was not on March the 1st. It was a bit earlier out there. So I'm still waiting for that piece of confirmation. But what we want to know, back to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, that comes from that bottom panel that you're looking at. Now, if price gets, and when it gets to 150, what I can tell you is that that is a signal inside the New York Stock Exchange that the market is overbought. 
So that would say for short-term traders, most certainly, that would be a nice time for you to start taking a look at potential intraday type of shorts, potentially, because we've got this jet propulsion thing that's happening in the background. I'm not going to share that chart with you right now, but uh, subscribers have seen it. You have seen it before from time to time, uh, and I don't have a confirmation in it until the close, but I can tell you as we speak right now, it's there. It is, and I, it is there. And above, getting above that threshold, it is a very important bullish signal. Longer term, when I say longer term, over the course of the next, we'll call it the next 30 days out there. And that's helpful to understand what's in store for us over the course of these next few weeks that are out here. Now, we're going to watch because if we can get this, now you and I necessarily, but if the market can get this advanced decline oscillator reading to close above 150, well, every other time that it has done that, just take a look at the past few. We got above the 150 mark. You got up to 180. It was on the day of November 22nd, 2016. That led to eventual higher prices out there. Uh, we then had a, another reading out here. This took place, uh, 179 was reading on December 7th. That led to higher prices in the uh, market. Getting and failing at the uh, 150 level was really on the trading session of January 4th. You were at 140, 139.99 to be exact, and never got above it. You saw a market that really went sideways there. But the prior two indications were, mm, don't worry, we're just taking a time out. We're going to go ahead and cruise missile higher out here. You take a look at the reading back in July. 2016, you get up to one set closing basis, 171.76. You end up going to higher price. Uh, you come back all the way here into uh, February, February 17th, 2016. Now, this is not catching the bottom, by the way. This is as price has moved higher in order to get up to these levels. But crossing that threshold, staying above that threshold, closing above that threshold has but one We'll call it a primary meeting because nothing is there's there is anything can always fail. And I probably can go back and find an instance or two, but that's it. I probably can only go back and find an instance or two. That's the whole point here. And that is why you and I take a look at it. And yes, you and I, we don't really trade the New York Stock Exchange in total. But boy, the messages that can come from it from time to time. They are doozies out here. Just like you know, we pay attention to that minus 150 area as well. So I don't mean to dwell on it, but I need to be able to share with you and set the framework for the uh, market. And, and we are going to see a bear market. We are going to see a correction. It's just a matter of trying to time that. And at tonight's workshop, that's what I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share with you a set of tools, simple set of tools, relatively simple set of tools out there that you want to know. That is any time period trader, certainly longer term, your retirement account type trading, you got to be here. And if you can't be there, look, everybody's invited, right? You're, you're, each of you listening are probably a member. Many of you may not have logged into your members page recently, but go ahead and do so. If you don't have a subscription, there's really not a lot of reason to go ahead and, uh, and log in. But go ahead, log in. If you don't have the password, like most of us click on the forgot password, it gets mailed to you and you can log in, whether to catch it live or to catch it on Memorex, which will be up uh, tomorrow afternoon, by tomorrow afternoon out there. So New York Stock Exchange, as we speak right now, on uh, what's today, April 26th, uh, hasn't given, this is, this is the last piece of the puzzle out here or the next piece of the puzzle with regard to the New York Stock Exchange. I don't know that we're going to get there yet. Today, it doesn't have to be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be the next day. It could be on Monday of next week. We just simply want to go ahead and keep both eyes, all three of them, on it. Yeah, how can you be both eyes and then keep all three of them on it? Okay, so that is with regard to, in essence, really what the markets are doing. Now, I had provided you with a target for the ES Mini. Let's let's not uh, let's not forget that. And yes, I'm not. Uh, I'm, it's not like I'm ignoring it. Now, that target, by the way, was 23.97, and the actual high today was 23.94.75. So so far, I'm basically nine ticks away from that 23.97. Really, I said 23.97.25. I think just to be fair out there. Um, so and it looks like that level is going to be hit. But that level can be taken out. That's what those acceleration aspects of what you and I were looking at inside the New York Stock Exchange are going to go ahead and communicate to uh, both of us. So uh, because we've seen these uh, market profiles, we have seen these fail. 
Yes, yes, indeed he do. Take a look at the NQ out here. It's got basically no resistance. I take a look at Leon Russell 2000 out here. It just simply took it. Remember, right, this is what you and I know. This is what you and I know with certainty. Not like 100% certainty, like 10,000% certainty. Bull markets do best when? Uh, yeah, of course, when, when prices are going up. No, bull markets do best when? When the Russell 2000 and the NDX 100 or the NQ, so it's called the TF and the NQ, are leading the pack. Now, you tell me as you take a look at this screen here, this four-quadrant screen out here, where we take a look at the ES Mini in the left-hand panel, the NQ in the right, the lower left is the Dow, the lower right is the Russell 2000. You tell me, breakout-wise, above resistance-wise, who the Sam Heck is leading the pack out here. Yeah. It is Leon Russell 2000 and a Stevie NQ, uh, whatever it is. So this is this is good. This is good. Doesn't mean we're not going to see an eventual pullback. Uh, let's face it. We've pretty much gone straight up since uh, the uh, 17th. That, my friends, is a beautiful thing. Steve Rhodes with TF. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. So Sean writes in, and Sean, thanks for uh, writing in. 
if we uh, take, a, as Sean writes in, I'd like higher price, but I also believe that uh, the March 1st high needs to be tested, and here's the key, taken out with volume. That would give me the all clear. I'd rather that test doesn't happen today with this volume. That would put my bear overcoat on for a short time. Now, Sean, I just want to, and, and, and I'll, I'll take really both sides of that trade, or at least tell you what I'm looking at and thinking. Because I want to, I've given you the bullish case, which we still need some confirmation on. All right. But with regard to this here, and I want to get to the volume piece of it. If that is a true statement, then I want to come back to the last time that the SPY, because you're referring to March 1st, we already know the Qs have taken out the March 1st, and that the Russell 2000 has done the same. So it's either the Dow the Diamonds or it is the S&P. I'm thinking you're talking about the S&P. So let's take a look at the last time that if, if what you just said is true, then shouldn't it always be true, right? Uh, we're going to find out the answer, obviously, is, is no, it shouldn't always be true. It doesn't always have to be true. But I would take it back to December 13th. On December 13th, the SPY hit an all-time high of 228.34. And when it, when it did it, it did it with good volume, 110 million shares, accelerating volume out here. The day before was 102, the day before 88, right? So volume was accelerating into it. Same kind of thing that took place on March the 1st. March the 1st, by the way, had 149 million shares. You've only done 35 today, and that is why Sean is saying, I'd rather not see that high get taken out today with light volume because then he wants to go ahead and put his bear coat on. Now, I'm going to give him reason to consider putting that bear coat on or things that need to happen, but it ain't, doesn't, I can, I can say ain't, it doesn't have anything to do with this volume aspect inside of these ETFs. This volume aspect inside of these ETFs for making trading decisions, it is a dangerous thing. It, it, just, just, it just, but I'll give you the other ones that actually are more reliable. If you take a look at when price actually cleared that level and then the bear coat would have come on, would have been January 25th. January 25th, that level, that other previous high, was taken out. Light volume, 84 million shares versus 110. In fact, we saw a little bit of an island top that formed out there. Should have been, from a spy standpoint, uh, formed over three days. Should have been, it should have been the killer, all right? That should have been the killer peer pill out here. But here's the reality. When price moved back to above it just a few days later, later on February 3rd, 80 million shares, the day after 57, the day after 51, the day after 65, the day after 66, then 55, then 71. We're not anywhere near 110 million shares as the SPY had taken out that high with light volume many days earlier. Volume is just one quotient, one quotient, one piece of the uh, puzzle, but it is not the be-all to end-all. I would suggest to you, and I'd say, hey, Sean, go back and take a look at those other instances. Now, what is it that I think is more reliable with regard to what it is that the market might want to do, or at least other factors that you would want to consider. So for those of you that are considering going short, the ES Mini is an example, you know we had been taking, like we just did it here a few minutes ago, that uh, 97 level. We're only a couple of points away. Now, in the case of the ES on a daily basis, we know that there are potential topping signals, such as Tom DeMarc's system, where we take a look at the TD sequential count, and that took place yesterday. You'll see the number blue 13 on on my screen out here. Now, today is no confirmation, and I doubt we would get a confirmation today uh, unless we had just one huge sell-off. Not that it can't happen, but it's not in the picture as we speak just yet. And at a minimum, you would need to see a close below 2364. Now, 2364 versus we're trading at 2390 right now, that in, that in itself is a pretty hefty move in essence to the uh, downside. But nonetheless, you would need to see a close below that. Now, that's just looking at Stevie's red line. The reality is today, one, two, three, one, two, three, you'd need to see a close below even that level. It's probably around 2350. I'm not going to get the exact number because we're the, no reason to as we speak right now. So the daily gives you a the futures contract. This way you don't have to worry about volume. You're just looking at patterns that are out there, and then you're going to go ahead and remove that volume ETF that'll get you in a lot of trouble out there from your just your trading decisions. I can't tell you why. I just know that the structure of the ETFs and the volume that are inside it has changed enough um, to factor in some other things.
If we take a look at the five-hour chart, this is kind of interesting here, Sean, the five-hour chart for the ES Mini, coming off of the, as we came back from the uh, Easter weekend out here, and you can see that you are in wave number six, a potentially seven, could be more than, it may, it may only be wave number two that we're in, but we do see that price has been moving higher doing less relative energy. Now, you need to see the bears arrive, and not necessarily during this two-hour period. I believe this candle here completes at two o'clock, so you'd have to see what the four o'clock candle looks like. Uh, if no bears show up and no close below Stevie's red line here, <laughs> no reason to get uh, the skirt in a tizzy, so to speak, out there. So that's what the five-hour chart is communicating to you and I. Now, the reason why I'm all focused on all this, just so we can see, we can take a look at both sides of the trade. Nothing here changes my opinion that uh, price wants to move higher. <clears throat> Our opinions can get swayed and changed when we see these other patterns give you those bearish signals out there. Otherwise, we're speculating on the wrong side of the speculation, so to speak. If we take a look at the NQ off of the low out here, the so-called Easter low, was that the, yeah, that was the low. It happened to be the uh, day, the, the close on that Thursday, the low on the Thursday session before Good Friday. But you can see we are potentially in wave number seven. Yeah, it's waving. Really won't know until we see, well, what the four o'clock session looks like and then what the session after that, because after hours, I don't know who's releasing what today. But, you know, wave number seven gets taken out inside the NQ on a five-hour basis. Uh, you know, last time we had a wave G, a seventh wave move out here. You can see back around April 5th, we did see a nice retracement. So it is why we pay attention to it. I'm not ignorant of the fact that these patterns are out there. They just haven't confirmed anything as we speak just yet. So I'll keep one eye on these for sure. However, what's interesting here is uh, what was one of the uh, weak links out out here right what was one of the weak links no it still is okay if we take a look at the the russell forget forget about what i just said there if we take a look at the russell right bull markets work great when the nq and the russell 2000 are leading you can see off of its low its easter weekend low out there that it too is in wave number seven or potentially wave number seven out there no reversal or anything in sight but it is worth paying attention to what happens if we really do get this reversal of fortune today tomorrow something like that we'll have to come back and see where a couple of these other readings are it could mean nothing more than just a little bit of a retracement with the market still wanting to go ahead and motor on to higher highs over the coming week so uh, hopefully i haven't belabored it too much but but i just Sean, I just wanted to, to ask you to go ahead and integrate some of these other tools into uh, the decisions versus just rely upon the volume test of a swing point inside of one of these index ETFs. It's, they're just not as reliable, and I want you to have more reliable, uh, more reliable results than uh, than just uh, that out there. Okay, uh, we haven't looked at um, gold and silver and everything glittery out here, and in order to do that, we have to uh, go ahead and start with the Japanese yen. As we take a look at the Japanese yen, there is some major, potential major, major, I, I mean major problems here lurking for metals and then miners, and I mean major. And when we come back from this break, we'll go take a look at the Gartley buy pattern that you and I took a look at last week that confirmed it has accelerated. It's off to outcome number one. There are five potential outcomes of every Gartley pattern. Outcome number one is just 112. Outcome number two is 114. That would put a sting into the metals. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up 45, S&P's up 6. Let's go to Tampa and speak with uh, Rob. Rob, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? Hey, good, Steve. Hey, it's Tom. Oh, hey, Tom. Tom. How you? Uh, sorry, hey. they got the they got the name uh, wrong there. But uh, um, you you want to take a look at uh, Twitter? Must have been a Twitter problem that happened when they uh, let me know you were on the line, um, which is trading out at sixteen oh five. Nice gap up today. What are you What are you doing with Twitter or thinking I, I, of doing? And how can I help I, I you? I bought it. Yeah, I did. Well, Steve, I bought it uh, last week, late last week. I dumped it this morning, I, about an hour ago. I saw that nice gap up. I just took it. I mean, how, how do you pass up on that? I mean, you think this baby's going to pull back from here, or do you think we're going to keep going? Well, you've got you've got nice volume in this equity today, so so that gap up is a sign of strength for sure. Now, price can pull. So, do you like trading Twitter? Uh, is this the first time that you've traded it? Kind no, of give I've me your, your. Yeah, no, I've traded before in the past. Okay. So, so, so now that you're out and you've taken the money, first thing we have to uh, say is uh, congrats. If we had it in the background, we, we'd clap and do all that for you. So congrats on the uh, trade, and there's never anything wrong with taking money. Good volume in it today. If for any reason this were to pull back, so that gap basically becomes a breakout area, and if price were to come down to the high of yesterday, which is about 1496, with the right volume metrics, you might want to go ahead and consider taking that trade again. Because okay. of the volume that's inside it, and this thing last time that it gapped down was with 109 million shares. I don't know what today's share output is going to look like, but this suggests to me that uh, Twitter's going to go ahead and try and make the uh, 1712 level. That is the top of the session from February 9th. Um, it could even, and if it closes above that, then it's going to go try to close that gap which is, says that it would want to get down to about the 1805 area. I'm not really suggesting that you go ahead and get back into it. If you were still in the trade, those would be the target levels that you and I would be looking for. Now, one of the other real beauties of this, which Twitter has not done in a long time, at least going back to October of 2016, uh, what it has done today is it gapped up and it took out its weekly TAS market profile. That was an important level of, of uh, resistance to take out. 1533 was the uh, number. Uh, and the reason that I say that is because that offers to you and I uh, more than just a glimmer of hope 
from a standpoint, if you were long this equity, that the uh, trend has changed. Because price, if the, if the trend had not changed, let's say, price should never have been able, could have gone up and tested 1533, but really was never supposed to be able to close above 1533. So... Um, so, yes, I think Twitter is going to go higher. I think it's going to run into some, um, you know, some turbulence, certainly on the way up. Um, but uh, since you're out of it and I've given you my take and you've spent more time looking at this chart, what, what questions does my comments, what do they pose to you? What, what, what are you what are you thinking? Well, I, you know, I, I had a little target on this. It's a short-term little trade, little quick swing trade for me. And I was going to jump out of there 15.35, and obviously it well exceeded that. And I'm just like, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and take the profit. And if it pulls yeah. back, I'll jump on it again. I mean, you, you just can't beat it. You know, it's a nice 10%, 12% profit there in about, you know, two or three days. So, I mean, so I, it was hard for me to. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm at this, as I look at this market right now, I mean, I, I'm just thinking about something. When, when's this thing going to take a burp? I mean, you know, uh, what a run we've been having here, you know. I, I, yes, yes, we have. But here's here's what I would do, um, because you, you've you've taken all your money off the table. You just simply have uh, you've got a nice profit. It exceeded your target. Kudos to you. Now I would just as kind of like a market laboratory experiment. You know, utilizing some of these tools that that you and I just looked at, watch to see how this trades. See if these tools and this volume metrics really was giving us the clear signal. You know, as it tries to make its way up into the high of 1712, just so that you can put that together with any other future trades and intraday time period, whatever it is that you might use um, to use this. Otherwise, you come back and say, Steve, you did no diddly on this. It didn't do anything uh, that you said. But there should be good support on this now at 1533 is how I would take a look at it. Okay, great, Steve. Thanks for the analysis. You bet. Thanks so much for calling. That was Tom in uh, Tampa, and we were taking a look at uh, Twitter out there, TWTR. Now, let's go back and take a look at, we were going to, I mentioned the uh, Gartley buy pattern inside of the Japanese yen, which is a real problem, real potential problem here for gold, silver, the uh, miners, the whole nine yards. And that's because this Gartley buy that's set up. Let me get rid of the uh, market profiles out here. We don't need those on our system as we speak right now, although 112.55 is somewhat of a no-brainer right now. So the yen should go ahead and target 112.55. I know I'm pounding on the table out here. And that 112.55 is also an important mark because just like time and I were Tom and I were talking about Twitter. If we see, if you see the Japanese uh, U.S. dollar go ahead and uh, currency pair go ahead and close above 112.55, that's telling us that there's a change in trend that is underway as well. And outcome number two, which is the 0.618 retracement of this A to B equals CD, is in the books, even though it'll take time for price to get up there, which is 114.60. And until we see the decoupling of the yen versus uh, currencies as well as the uh, treasury bonds out there, that says those go lower while this moves higher out here. And that's only outcome number two of potentially five outcomes. See, this is a nice Gartley buy. You had an A to B equals CD correction. It was confirmed by the uh, bulls out here. They gave us the uh, signals. You know, as far as the retracement level of the entire pattern out here, probably a 0.618 retracement. Was it uh, uh, not even? Uh, not even a 0.68 retracement. That says this is this could be very strong. You see, if if your A to B equals CD and your Gartley doesn't even get to the 0.68 retracement level, just picture taking a rubber band, wrapping it around your finger as hard as you can. If you backed it off 50% and let it go, what kind of energy compared to doing the same thing and backing it off 62%, 61.8% out there? Which one has more energy? This one has more energy. So now when we take a look, let's get rid of the A to B equals CD out here. Here. Those Gartleys have five outcomes. Come on, delete that suck. There we go. So outcome number one is a 0.382 retracement level. That is 112.13. That says uh, the mining equities, metals themselves, mm, they, they're going to feel pressure. They may not do a whole lot more to the downside. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but watch the 112.13. That should be an area where you start to see things back off. Now, just because you see the N back off, don't uh, don't overload. Don't back up the truck inside those miners out here. That's a normal place for people to get off the elevator. And the question is, are we going to start to see an A to B equals CD to the upside? 
then taking price to 114.60. Outcome number three, 116.36. Outcome number four, the 100% move of the move. And outcome number five, if this turns into an A to B equals CD to the upside, gold is just simply going to get crushed. And so, too, very likely, will those mining equities. So we just need to be careful. This yen is basically not letting off of the uh, gas pedal out there. Where is it that uh, Goldilocks could uh, pull all the way back to? Um, really? Well, the first target becomes down at the uh, March lows for gold. You know, that's in the 1205-ish uh, type area. Uh, below that, it uh, gets you back into the 1194 area. What, what we need... I'm speaking in the we, the plural we, of you and I. I'm not in any of the mining trades just yet. All my, my market news, my newsletter went to bearish gold a couple of days ago. What we need in order to reverse that is we need the yen to start strengthening. And it's not doing that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Now 
Welcome back, folks. So uh, a couple questions that have come in, so I want to try to get to them in the next four minutes. First of all, uh, one question came in. Will tonight's uh, workshop be archived? And the answer is yes. So if you can't attend it, uh, the uh, workshop live tonight, uh, it should be on your members page tomorrow afternoon for you to view over the next 30 days. So uh, thanks for writing in. Uh, second, um, we had a question inside the Tiger's Den. Steve, do you think that the ES gap open from Sunday night could be our friend soon? Here's what I would take a look at. Now, uh, we're looking at four different time frames for the ES Mini. This is the contract where things have been stitched together. That way, when we get to the weekly and even the daily, the numbers are a little bit more reliable with regard to TAS market profiles. They're going to be different depending on what you take a, a look at. But here's what we know right now. The top of the 60 box is number, the number there is 2387. The top of the 240 is 2389. So 87, 89, two points. That should be support out here. It's the first level you need to see fail if you're looking for the gap because you're talking about it moving down. The third level is the weekly, which shows 2382. That's not the 97 level that comes from taking a look at the June contract. This is the etch a sketch, etch -a -sketch uh, contract. So 2383, 2389, 2387. Those are the levels that you need to see broken in order to even consider price pulling back into that level. But I would say, I would hearken to say 2381 really becomes then that next level of support versus trying to get all the way back down in the 2360 uh, type area. So that's what I would be looking for. First things first, first things you've got to see are some failures at those levels that I just gave you. Then you anticipate price pulling back to the 2380 level, and then you can kind of deal with things one at a time out here. 2380 ought to be, ought to be some darn good support out there. I have a question here from Sylvia. I was trying to figure out how to get into the uh, workshop. If you have any problems, just call the office at TFNN, and they will assist you there. The question is, would like to enter TMF. TMF is uh, which of those? Uh, the direction chair daily 20 plus. And so the question is, any perspectives on it? And the answer is yes. Uh, first of all, with the yen doing what it's doing, because bonds tend to correlate with the yen, this becomes a, a dangerous trade out here. I think it becomes a dangerous trade. I also think it becomes a dangerous trade because when I take a look at the 30-year out here, price has broken back kind of into that consolidation range out here. I would need to see the 30-year, and you're asking about the 20-year. I would need to see the 30-year in order for me to take off my bearish stance on it. I need to see it close above Stevie's red line, that oscillator on change line, 153.62. That doesn't mean things can't bounce between here and there, but I think your perspective with regard to your trade is more than just a couple of days out there. Um, so right now, this is a bit iffy. It is very much a bit iffy. And what's creating the iffiness here is that if that yen continues to go ahead and fulfill some of those uh, Gartley buy objectives out here, it's going to hurt the price of uh, treasuries, and it's going to hurt. It's going to sting like a bee the price of gold, the price of silver, and very likely the mining equities at all. Hey, that was cool. I was able to get that done in like uh, three minutes time out here. We still have a minute to spare and just a quick check to see if there's any other uh, requests out here. None that I see. So folks, I hope that uh, to see you this evening inside the uh, inside the uh, den for my uh, workshop on how to be able to spot uh, bear markets out there. Uh, as bullish as things are right now, I can assure you Two things. You and I are going to see another correction, which is going to be something north of 10% in the market. And you and I are going to go ahead and see another bear market. And both of those are a bit overdue. So learning how to be able to spot those bear markets is something you want to have in your arsenal. I hope to see you there tonight. It'll be concise. You'll have the playbook. And you can always listen to the archive. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you in a few hours. Take care. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, accurate, 
active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.